Hey everybody, welcome to my channel, my name is Dennis. So, today's video I'm going to talk a couple of things. Um, first off, when I built the system just to do the video on it, one of the things I wanted to do was have the operating system on the M.2 drive. Okay, so I was having issues with that, wouldn't boot to it, wouldn't let the OS install to it. Rookie mistake, so I'm going to explain to you what causes that and what you can do about it. And I'm also going to have a look at the BIOS to show you how to set your, um, basically your XMP profile and maybe a couple other things along the way. So stay tuned and hope you like it. First thing we're going to do is explain the M.2 drive. All right. So basically the M.2 drive in there was not initialized. Now, some of them are. Some of them seem to recognize right off the bat. Depends on your motherboard, manufacturer, depends on a whole bunch of various things. But if it's not, you, you can go back and look at how to initialize that on your PC management and how to initialize your drive, which I did, okay? But I didn't do it when I first set this up. So the problem here is I had to put the SSD drive in here Install the operating system to that, and then I put everything on to the M.2 drive for some games and some other various things. But the problem now is, like, I don't like it that way. So now that I know that you have to initialize the M.2 drive, the problem remains, how do I keep everything without, uh, like, having to start all over? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So the M.2 drive, once you initialize it under desktop management, um, basically, you clone the drive, okay? So on here, oh, I did a um, review on this product, and the M.2 drive is inside, and basically I did a, you know, used Macrium Reflect to clone my uh, SSD onto this, and now basically it's done. So I'll take the M.2 drive out of here, put it on one of the other slots, doesn't matter which one, and start it up. Now, what people run into a problem with is they'll take the M.2 drive. It's plugged into a USB port, well, in this case it's USB Type-C, and they'll try and start it up and see if it'll work, and it probably will not, because it won't run from the USB port. In some cases it will, but not in this case. So if you want to run your operating system from that, put it into your M.2 drive, okay? As far as cloning it, um, I'll put a link uh, up top um, for one of the cards and you can look at that for how to clone your hard drive uh, and that'll help you out there. And then that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So we're going to test it, make sure to see if that will actually work because the C drive and everything that's on here on my SSD is on there. So I'm going to disconnect my SSD drive. I'm going to put that in one of the M.2s. I'm going to fire it up and see if it works. That'll be that part of it. Next part is going to be, I'm going to go into the actual BIOS. Okay. So basically this video isn't like a detailed step-by-step -step like I usually do. Because um, I've done all these videos in the past. So you can always just Google, uh, do a search there and, and you'll find it. And it's kind of a free-for-all kind of this and that. Uh, just explain everything. So hope you like it. And let's get on to... Um, the M.2 drive. I'm not going to show the install. It's pretty simple. Take it out of here. Put the M.2 drive. Don't forget to take off your plastic strip. Set it back inside. And then boot up. And if you get it right, it'll work. So let's see.
bias. Okay, so let's push a key. And it doesn't work. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go into the BIOS and select that as our boot drive. So we hit delete to get into the BIOS. Go to our M.2. You can see that Kingston M.2 is still recognized. And here's our Corsair one there. Okay. So we want it to boot to this one. Okay, so when I went into the BIOS, that didn't seem to let me select my drive. So we hit the, the F12 key. So the F12 key on at least the uh, Gigabyte motherboard is your uh, boot devices. So now you can see I can select from all these different devices and of course my SSD is not showing up. That's the one I want to boot from. So I select it and it's going to try and find it. Okay, so what I did differently is it wouldn't recognize, it wouldn't boot up. So what I did is I changed the um, M.2 drives to the two different ones. They didn't matter. So I hooked up the SSD again. So I'm like, okay. But then the, what I made is a difference is when it booted up, once it booted up, I went into the F12 and I selected the right drive. Because it's still looking for an operating system because it remembers that it had it. Um, it's the only reason I can come up with at this moment. If you have inputs and insights on it, please throw them my way. Once I told it to use the M.2 drive as the boot drive, which is the, M the Corsair MP500, it booted up. So now we're going to verify that. Okay, because we want to know, did that actually work? Is it actually there? Is that where our C drive is at? So let's have a look. So since we're doing that, this is one of the things I want to talk about as far as showing you the disk management and how to initialize it. So if you go to this PC under File Explorer, right click, click on Manage. Okay, you're going to go to Disk Management. And all your active drives and partitions, everything, are going to show up here. All right. So there's our M.2 drive, the E drive. Okay, so you can see disk 0, uh, disk G, and now you can see, if we go down further, disk C. So how do we know if that actually worked or not? Okay, so once we know we've actually told it, to go to the M.2 drive, it's the uh, boot drive. Well, now to test it, we disable the SSD. We take it offline and see what happens. So let's do that. If you wanted to initialize this drive, by the way, like if you didn't have one that was initialized, you can go in here. Now it's already initialized, but you would right click. And then under here, it would have the option to initialize. Okay. It's a whole different video, but I just don't want to get into that. But I'm just going to give you an idea of where to look. Okay, so let's close this down. See, let's do one more thing. So ultimately changing, like I've disconnected the SSD drive right now. Could not get it to change to the M.2. So my solution was simple. Put my operating system back in. Boot up from it onto the M.2 drive that's in there. Because I can only assume my clone must have failed or just doesn't want to recognize the M.2 drive. So basically I'm going to reinstall the operating system onto the right place. And then we'll see everything else that was there before gets recognized. Or if it just simply goes ahead and everything is good. So we're going to go through this process. Once it's all done, we'll boot up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so this video didn't go quite according to plan, but what it did do is achieve my goal. I wanted the operating system to be on my M.2 drive, which it now is, but the way I had to go about it was not the way I started off. So, for whatever reason, it would not recognize my M.2 drive even after I initialized it. Uh, I went into the BIOS. And after having gone into BIOS, I got it to boot, installed operating system to the M.2 drive, everything is done. 
unfortunately I have to reinstall my programs all that kind of good stuff so that's where this video did not achieve its goal however one of the things I wanted to point out is even though I have to start over and I hadn't installed any programs that had anything I needed to worry about so for me it wasn't a big deal is the fact that after I've reinstalled Windows Windows 10 and Pro is on here and Windows is activated with a digital license that's because the uh, product key was tied to the motherboard okay primarily so even though I switched out the M.2 drive added a second M.2 drive and I have my two terabyte for storage I'm still good I don't have to reinstall an operating license uh, to activate anything so in a nutshell not the way I wanted to do it but it does show you that going into your boot drive will allow you to get where you want to go unfortunately not without installing your programs again so we're gonna move on we're gonna go to the BIOS sorry about not achieving what I wanted I'm gonna fix that I'm gonna figure out what and why that didn't happen and I'll come back to you with another video to explain exactly why that didn't work so stay tuned for that coming up I don't know how long it's gonna be it's gonna take me a while to figure out what went wrong but I want to show you I had a question about somebody asking about uh, my my RAM is 3200 or 3000 I think it was 3000 but it's still showing 2133 or whatever it was in the BIOS so it's running at the wrong speed so I'm going to show you in the BIOS where to fix that just real quickly here so we're going to restart the computer and it's going to come up it's going to be quick um, it's booting up a lot faster with the M.2 drive so you have to start hitting the delete key as soon as it goes to there's no input okay you may not get this but as soon as it starts to do the reboot start hitting your delete key so you can get into your BIOS in some cases it might be F12 you're going to have to look up uh, depending on your motherboard manufacturer which one it's going to be and in my case it was delete key so I'm here so all your settings are hitting now this is um, the advanced mode you're probably going to start up in this mode it's the easy mode that's the default if I click here it shows my M.2 drives now my uh, Corsair MP500 is, is the main drive I've got my Kingston as a second drive and I've got a 2 terabyte on there as well which should show here yeah right there so going over to the DRAM okay so your memory we've got two 8 gigabyte sticks running at 2133 okay that's what the speed is rated at but if you go down here and click on XMP profile 1 so if I click that right now, because right now I'm running at 3200. If I click it, it goes back and that's all it's going to run at. Because it says XMP disabled. So when it comes up like this, all you have to do is click that. It activates the profile running at the uh, speeds that it's capable of, 1.35 volts. And it's now going to be 3200. Okay, so if you see 2133, don't get concerned with that. What you want to be concerned with is this okay that's what it's now running at okay so don't forget save and exit you be sure to say yes system's going to reboot and you'll be good to go so what i wanted to also point out is remember i said i had everything uh my games and everything were on my c drive or my ssd okay because the operating system is now reporting on the m.2 I just plugged in my, S, my SSD drive and when it came up it said oh hey look here's all your Steam games so did I lose everything let's find out okay so I am gonna have to go in and download Steam again so I'm just gonna go to the website install Steam all right and for Windows 10 it's gonna want to set it up so I'm gonna save it do all that kind of good stuff and when I'm done, I'm going to go in and verify after Steam is set up, are these games and stuff still installed and what can I still use them without changing anything? 
Okay, so even though technically this video didn't succeed in its task to not lose everything, I didn't lose everything. I only lost some minor programs which are easy to fix. Steam is now on here. You can see Far Cry 4. It's already ready for me to play. A couple other ones I had already previously installed are here. So all my games, everything from Steam is still here. Okay, I can play it whenever I want it. So, just make sure when you're installing Steam, install it to the right place. Point it to the right directory where your games and everything were at before, and then you won't have any issues. And then download, install whatever other games you want to play, and you're good to go. So, we've done the BIOS, look at that. We've looked at the uh, M.2 drive a little bit. We now have our SSD working. We have both our M.2 drives and our two terabyte storage. So in essence, I've got what I was after. Um, kind of a roundabout way of getting it. I have completely agree. It's kind of jumps all over the place, but I hope that you got the end goal. The end goal was try not to have to reinstall all my games, not have to start from scratch, which I had to reinstall Windows, but that was pretty basic. It's pretty quick to install Windows 10 today. So, installed that. Everything is good to go. Now I'm ready to put it into a system, and life is good. All right, everybody. So, that's the video. I know I danced around a lot. Didn't achieve exactly what I was hoping to achieve, but I do have the M.2 drive in there with the operating system on it. The other M.2 is in there, it's recognized, my 2 terabyte drive is recognized, and now my SSD with all my Steam games is on there and recognized as well. To me, that's success. Yes, I have to download a couple other programs, but I didn't have to do a complete Windows install, um, reload every program, reload Steam, and I'm going to find as I go through, there's going to be other programs that are on that SSD that are just going to show up, okay? Because anything I put on the SSD is still going to be there. So I download something that was there before, I point it toward the SSD, it's going to say, hey, it's already there. It will reinstall the base program, but every bit of data that was there before, it will then find, all right? So, yeah, it's kind of a dicey, all over the board kind of video. Um, I just wanted to touch on a couple of things. Most importantly, it was the memory, how to set the X and P profile. Um, it's just profile one. That's that's the way most manufacturers have it set up today. Um, so there we go. So hope you like that video. If you like that video, hit that like. Hit that bell for future notifications. Subscribe if you're new here. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. So the first thing we're gonna like First thing right now, right? <laughs> but I do have the M.2 drive in there operating the old, the, old, the operating system on it.